All right, I'm David Wiggins, and today we're out here in the field working on uh, distance tips and techniques. Uh, we got Zach out here today. Nice to nice meet you, Zach. See you, bud. Um, he's out here hoping to improve his backhand uh, distance, and um, we're going to see him throw and hopefully work on his technique and try and get him some more distance. I guess I'll move this one. All right. First off, I want to take a look at your grip, because that's one important part of the throw, especially when you're looking for distance. So let's see how you're gripping the disc. Usually grip with the forefinger on the uh, inseam right there. Okay. So I'm about an inch away from the corner. Looks about right. That'd be, you know, the typical power grip. So um, I like that. That's good. I um, just have a hard time uh, with the release point. Uh huh. I don't know what you suggest about that. A lot of that is the the transfer of your body weight and when your arms coming through in correlation to your body weight. So if you're if you're coming through with your arm and pushing through with your hips at the same time, your arm should follow through. Okay. You don't want to be leading with your arm, and it looked like your body weight was a little bit too far forward during the throw. So okay, so just stay back more and then. Yeah, you wanna you wanna stay up on your toes a little bit more. Right. And. You really want your body weight to shift all the way back as soon as your arm's back. Okay. And then you come through with your whole body weight, and then your arm follows through at the end. So let's give that a try. Try bending a little bit more in the knees and get that weight um, a little bit lower. Like that, maybe? Yeah. Especially you want to concentrate on that very last plant because that's where really you're getting your power and your weight transfer from So let's see. I'm just gonna take a little run up to show you how I like to do it. You're gonna Come down and then notice the bed. I got right there and all my weights back And I'm planning on the toe of my foot not the okay. ball and then you're gonna come through slowly Stop and then that's where your arm comes through I just keep it straight usually. You keep it straight? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you really want to make sure your wrist is staying kind of loose and you don't want to lock it. Okay. That way, it almost acts like, you know, a slingshot effect. Because when your arm stops, you got a slight bend in your wrist. You don't want to lock it back here because then you're really just pulling with your arm and you're not letting your wrist really shoot through the end. Right. You want that slight bend and then keep it loose. That way, when your arm stops, wrist just kind of okay. follows through on its own. Oh yeah, that was better. Yeah, that was better. Um, now I would say you're coming a little too far upwards in your angle of release. Okay. So you're causing the nose of the disc to come up. And if you had a lot flippier disc, I'd say that'd be all right because then it would get the turn and glide. Yeah but you're probably gonna wanna come more over on top of it. So, so just try to release it as straight as... Yeah, you're coming upwards like that. Right. Try and come straight, straight through, across. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I saw what you did there. You, you dipped your arm halfway through yeah. trying to come in a little bit too close. So um, you you got to make sure all your weights on this foot when you come through, and you should, your body should be driving to where when you follow through, you're you're still in that pretty much same level, or your arms at the same level it was. So when you're coming through, boom. Okay. I don't know. Give that a try. Here's another T-bird.
you were leaning a little bit too far forwards, and I think that's what's causing you to dip at the end. Okay. And then your arm's coming up because, you know, if your back's straight, you can really get a better control of where your arm's coming through and on the Leaning too far. Yeah, like, over like, like you're that. leaning into your throw. Okay. And um, a little bit too far. Now, a little bit's good because, like I said before, you can get a lot of weight transport. Yeah. But if you're leaning in too far into it, it's going to cause you to um, curve your arm or move your arm up and down a little bit too much during the throw. Okay. So let's see if you can uh, straighten your back up a little bit. All right. Um, I don't know if you got any other discs you want to throw. Oh, that's up to you, whatever you think. Give that a try. Okay. So this is boss. Yeah, so when you're coming through right here. Yeah. See that? Yeah. How I'm not really. Yeah, because that's how I feel like I feel most Yeah, keep your head up. Okay. Boom. used to doing it the old way, so it's going to take some time to come out straight instead of, you know, I bend over quite a bit. Yep. Do that. Yep. It definitely takes repetition to get down the proper form, but, yeah. you know, once you realize the problems you're making, yeah. it really I, helps. I definitely could tell on that one throw with the with that first ball, so, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, that felt much better. Than, it looked like it came out smoother and faster than yeah. any of your previous throws, so that was good. All right, now we're going to go over some uh, typical problems that you see amateur players having with uh, their distance throws out there. And um, I really like to break down throwing, not just distance, but drives in general into three different um, kind of categories, the grip, the run up, and really your upper body movements. And a typical problem with a lot of amateur players is when they're trying to throw further or um, gain a little bit more distance is they're keeping um, what we call a control grip. So basically the pads of their fingers are uh, placed on the uh, flight plate of the disc instead of gripped under the rim. And when you grip um, all your fingers underneath the rim, that allows you to really get more pull on the disc and um, it, it's less drag um, than if you were to use the power grip or then use the control grip. When you're using the power grip, you're able to use more leverage and you're able to have more travel in your wrist and keep it looser than with the control grip because with the control grip you, your focus is on holding and pressing on the flight plate and um, making sure you're controlling the disc more which you know I throw both the control and the power grip on the course but when I'm going for pure distance I use the power grip and when I'm using a power grip it allows me that more free movement towards the end and really the snap at the end of the throw. So that's the advantage of the power grip and um, I'd say if you don't have one it would be a great way to help improve your distance. Another common problem with amateur players out there is um, a lot of the footwork and I know uh, a lot of y'all are familiar with the X-step but um, a lot of players have problem really utilizing the X-step properly because in order to use it with the maximum efficiency, you have to use proper weight transfer and uh, foot placement. Um, a lot of players, they rotate and keep their weight centered on the back of their foot, the heel and the ball of their foot. And when they're doing that, you know, they can't push the weight up and down and get the transfer that you could when you're standing on your toes. And it's harder to control the disc, obviously, when you're throwing harder and you have more weight transfer, but it can drastically help improve your distance. So another way I would say to help improve distance for amateur players is work on landing on your toes and work on the weight transfer at the very end of uh, your throw or X step. You really don't need a long run up to throw far. It helps, but if I were to throw a standstill, here. I'm sure I could get one over 400 feet and it's really due to that weight transfer at the end. You're coming up and planning and make sure you use your toes. Another typical problem that uh, you see amateur players is their upper body movements when they're coming through on the throw. They tend 
to not rotate um, their upper body when they're coming through with their hips. And really, you want to keep that in line at the same time. You can't move part of your body and um, not the rest and still maximize your distance. When you come back with your hips, you want your upper body to come back at the same time. And you're pretty much looking back in line with your arm and pulling through at the same time. So make sure your upper body movements um, are uh, in line with your lower body and follow through at the same time. All right, now we've covered some more uh, basic distance techniques and topics, and we're gonna move into more advanced uh, topics. Maybe you can throw 400, 500 feet, but you wanna add another 50 feet on there. And um, we're gonna cover a few things that hopefully can help you add that extra distance. One important thing is disc selection. Um, when I'm looking for an ideal distance disc, I'm looking for something that I can throw and it has enough high speed turn to where I can release it at a hyzer angle and it's gonna slowly come up and over and then to where it's starting to turn over and it's gonna hold a turnover angle or an anhyzer for the remainder of the flight and it's gonna finish at the end flat. I don't want the disc coming out at the end because it's just, it's falling out of the air when it's doing that and you're not getting the glide that you could get um, with a straight finish or a flat finish. And um, the Boss, in my opinion, is the furthest flying disc out there. It has a great combination of speed, high speed turn for it, and uh, glide. And uh, those three factors, I think, make this a great disc for distance. Um, that's uh, one important factor. Another uh, factor is just overall speed of your throw. Obviously, the more speed you have, the further the disc is going to go. So I try and incorporate as much speed as I can during my run-up. Um, a lot of players, they see my run-up and it's, it's really long when I'm in distance competitions and even on the course trying to reach maybe a five, 600 foot hole. So um, the explanation behind that is I can pick up more speed in my run-up and then transfer it to my throw if I uh, take a longer run-up. So it, it's hard to do, it takes a lot of practice. It's not for everybody. But if you can incorporate a faster run-up into your throw, that can also help put on some distance. Okay, I have a lot of people that ask me uh, proper technique for throwing a 360 um, because, you know, I've set both of my, or all of my distance world records with a 360 technique. And um, I think it's a great way to um, add distance in certain situations as far as distance competitions goes. There's a few pros out there that do use the 360 on the course. Um, I know Greg Hosfeld does, and he does it very effectively. I find it hard to control um, perfectly, not necessarily the angle of release or the direction it's going, but landing on the tee pad. But um, when I'm teaching players how to throw the 360, I try and break it down as simple as I can. And um, I start out by doing pretty much a three-step 360. So I'm going to show you that today. And um, if you want to go out in the field and practice this, it's great. Don't try and incorporate a long run up into it first. Get the, these three steps down and then start working on run up and your timing and weight transfer and um, see where it goes, see where it takes you. Hopefully it'll add some distance. All right, when I start out with this uh, basic, I guess, three step 360 technique, I uh, I place my, I'm obviously right handed, I place my left foot forward and uh, my right foot like I'm getting ready to uh, take off running or something like that, you know, weight up on my uh, back toe. And then I'm going to act like I'm starting to, you know, lunge forward. So first step here, and then this step is the most critical step because it's where you do your spin. And I like to think of it more as a hop instead of a spin because um, if you're just spinning on your foot, you're not getting that weight transfer. You need a hop to transfer the weight from this toe to that toe. So here we go. Boom. This second step is gonna put you in the position once you hop and do the rotation as if you were throwing a normal shot. So that's an important thing to consider when you're out there practicing this, is that when you come through on that hop, you want to be in the same position as you would be in any other driving situation and pull through and transfer that weight from your toes at the very end, drive through at the end. So uh, I'm going to put it all together here and um, show you.
show you in one motion. Do a few more. And I like to warm up um, by doing that simple three-step technique just to get, you know, the muscles loosened up and the different muscles that I use when I'm not throwing a regular shot when I'm out here in the field practicing um, for distance competitions. So um, once you get that down, it's all about, you know, increasing your speed from a normal run-up and then incorporating those last three steps to really turn it into a 360. So if you wanted to speed up more. I like taking about seven steps before I hop into my spin. So um, I'm going to show you my uh, full 360 throw here. Hey.